Questions 24 to 26 in the ACER purple paper. Question 24. A line that is missing from the table is... So this sort of question requires us to understand a little bit about the annotation. So um, in this case, what we've got is a gene and this gene is encoding for um, the ability to hear, say. Now, genes can have different types of alleles. So let's assume that um, the dominant allele, so the capital um, letter, uh, so the dominant allele is annotated by a capital letter, so the dominant allele leads to the ability to hear, so you get normal hearing. Um, but there is a sort of broken allele, a not so good allele, that results in deafness. But this um, allele is recessive. So what usually happens is, um, say in a normal person, they'll get two big D alleles for that specific gene and therefore they'll be normal. But what could happen is um, someone could have the two little d gene, uh, sorry, little d alleles, and therefore they'll be deaf. But if they have one big D and one little d, well then they will be normal. So um, the dominant allele always is the sort of um, uh, phenotype that shows if there is a dominant and a recessive allele in the same um, eventual genotype. But um, what we've got here is a genotype phenotype table and we're told uh, certain phenotypes and, and we've matched them up with certain genotypes and we've got to figure out what is the sort of the relationship. So what I'd do is I'd pick out all the uh, phenotypes. So I'd pick out the say deaf mute phenotype and I'd write down or slash just take a note of all of the genotypes that fall under this umbrella. So we get D, little d, little d, big E, big E, little d, little d, big E, little e, and a big D, little d, little e, little e. And you gotta try and figure out some sort of relationship that just holds true for the deaf mute phenotype. So the one that really sticks out to me is that if you have a uh, homozygous recessive, so this allele is called is also known as a homozygous recessive allele because homo meaning um, same. These are both little d's and recessive. They're both recessive alleles. So if we have the homozygous recessive um, genotype in any gene, then what will happen is we get a deaf mute phenotype. And if you sort of go through all the normal phenotypes, you'll note that in every genotype which results in a normal phenotype, you'll see that there is at least always one um, dominant allele in each of the genes. So there's always one uh, capital D and there's always one capital E in each of those normal phenotypes. So we know that if you get a homozygous recessive gene, then uh, you will see the deaf mute phenotype. So let's go through 24. Um, A, we have big D, big D, little e, little e. So the little e's um, mean that we have a homozygous recessive gene. So therefore, we'd expect the phenotype to be deaf mute for A, but that's not what's being said in A, so A is incorrect. B, uh, we have little d, little d, little e, little e. So everything is homozygous recessive. So therefore, we'd expect deaf mute, and that's what we get in our phenotype for B. So therefore, B is the correct answer for question 24. Question 25. The deaf mute phenotype occurs whenever. So we already figured this out in question 24. The uh, deaf mute phenotype occurs whenever uh, we have both recessive alleles of one of the genes occurring, and that's because when we have that homozygous recessive um, scenario for one of the genes, then we've always found that the deaf mute phenotype occurs. So therefore, for question 25, D is the correct answer. 
Question 26. Which one of the following gives the most likely genotypes of III8 and III9? So we firstly have to sort of understand how we inherit each of these alleles and the genes and the likely genotype that's going to come up from our child. So say we have two parents and they've each got two uh, genes represented here. So their genotype for mum is um, homozygous recessive for A and homozygous dominant for B. Whilst for dad, for A, it's homozygous dominant and for B, it's homozygous recessive. Now, in the child, um, we are going to see one allele from each parent for each gene. So from mum, we're going to inherit one allele of A. And in this case, mum only has little a's. So therefore, um, from mum at least, we're going to uh, get only a little a. Let me just color this in so I can see this a bit better. So from mum, we get um, one little a. And from dad, what we're going to get is um, one a allele. And in this case, dad only has big a's. So from dad, we're going to get a big a. From mum, again, we're only going to get, um, we're going to get one allele from mum for B. So therefore we're going to get big B, as there are only big Bs from mum. And from dad, we're going to get a little B, because there are only little Bs from dad. So overall, what we get for our child is a genotype of big A, little A, big B, little B. So they're going to be heterozygous for both genes. So that's sort of how we inherit um, each of these genotypes. And from there, we can sort of apply this to 26. So our, both of our parents, uh, so our parent uh, III8 and III9, they're both affected. So they both have that um, deaf mute phenotype. So from that, we can immediately rule out answer A, as in answer A, both of the parents would be unaffected if they had the genotype described in answer A. And that's because the genotype in A has a dominant allele in both genes. So therefore, they will be unaffected. So A is incorrect. Let's go through to B. B, uh, both parents had a recessive, a homozygous recessive D allele and a, a homozygous dominant E. So what would happen is, yes, whilst both parents would be affected in this scenario, the child, sorry, all the children of those two parents would be affected. And that's because if we have two parents with um, the homozygous D, then what would happen is uh, we get one, one allele from the mum, one allele from the dad, one allele from the mum, one from the dad. So all the children are going to have this genotype because there is no way to get a, uh, a big, big D in, no way to get a little E in into the um, genotype of the child because both parents only have big E's and only have little D's. So therefore, the, this child, as it has a homozygous recessive D component, then therefore this child would be affected. But that's not what's being showed in the figure. In the figure, we have affected parents, but all the children are unaffected. In C, we've got one parent who is um, homozygous recessive for D, homozygous dominant for E, and the other which is homozygous dominant for D, homozygous recessive for E. Well, what you'll get is actually the scenario described on the screen. So we have the mum, which is homozygous recessive A, homozygous dominant B. If we just substitute um, E for B and D for A. And similarly for the dad, we substitute D for A and E for B. Well, we'll get that exact same scenario. And what will happen is all the children will be homo uh, heterozygous. So therefore, since 
we know that heterozygous um, genotypes result in the normal phenotype, we can say that all the children will be unaffected. But also, all of the parents will be affected with those genotypes because um, the uh, uh, one of the parents will have a homozygous recessive D, which is, as we know, uh, will cause a deaf mute phenotype, and the other one has a homozygous recessive E, which will again cause that deaf mute phenotype. So C is the correct answer, as it will result in affected parents, but unaffected children every single time.